found an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I oiled her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired her hurts and years of use, and let her sew again. And welcome back. I am going to be starting to put this beautiful girl back together today. If you've watched before, you've seen me strip her, paint her. I think that she is gorgeous. I love the way all of this turned out. So I'm just going to basically try to reverse the order that I took her apart. Um, the bottom part where there are some pieces that I was not able to remove. Um, I'm going to make sure that those are perfectly clean first because it will be easier to clean them before there's other things stuck around her. But at this point, if I tip her up a bit, uh, I think I need to tip her this way. She's very awkward. She's a very awkward girl. I need to get her in a box really soon here. Um, but. You can see that she does spin freely at this point, so that is a very good thing. So let me bring the camera in closer and we'll get started putting her together. First, if you haven't seen her yet, sorry, let me give you just a little bit of a closer view of her. She is, has a little bluebird, hummingbird, flowers going on. She has a very stylized here, very stylized new home label. I love that. And um, now she has a um, top coat, a clear coat on the machine itself and on the plates. The wheel and the bobbin winder just have the really good rust-oleum gloss that comes with the paint itself. It does not have the extra clear coat. I don't think it really needs it at this point. Oh, so let me go ahead and get my box of pieces. And I'm going to start where I, I'm basically reversing the process of how I took it apart. And the last thing I took apart was my bobbin winder. So I'm going to put that back together again. And just so you can get a quick look, this sits on here. There's three little bumps up there on top. Okay, there's no spring or anything. Then there's this little toothed mechanism it goes over it like so. And of course, it's assorted screws. Um, I am going to, my husband's working on woodworking stuff, so I'm not gonna have the camera rolling too long because he has to stop what he's doing while I'm working. But that's how it's gonna go. This big, longer screw is the one that holds it to the machine. So we've got a shorter, shorter threaded screw here, a longer threaded screw here that has a little shoulder on it, just like that. Okay, so it is all back together and turning freely. This part that's on a spring is springing freely. So I'm just gonna set this aside with its little bolt that I believe goes this way and uh, until I'm ready to put this back onto the machine itself. Okay, so I just want to show you what the underside looks like right now before I put anything back together again. Um, I might do a little touch up polishing on it, but this part does move freely. This part that I was not able to remove also moves freely and this has been uh, oiled down. It was masked off so there's no paint on here. And that's where the stitch length adjustment comes in. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my feed dogs and reattach them here and I can do that from a screw on the outside. Okay, so looking at the bottom here, I've got this sliding bar that I need to set so that it's going to, um, this little spoke here goes through the hole, that's where the knob goes to adjust the stitch length. And I've oiled the slide to make sure that it's going to move nice and freely and it is. 
So on the bottom here, there's this little squared bracket and it slides on this bar. So I want to make sure that I also have this one nicely oiled so that it will move freely and this little squared off area here. Just testing it to make sure it moves freely and it does. Okay, so this comes through the bottom so it looks like that. Then there is a flat washer that goes on top and a nut, an oddly shaped nut that I need to put on top. I think it was 3 8 of an inch, so let me go ahead and get that. Okay, so it's back in and I can tell you that this little nut really wanted to cross thread itself very easily, but it's on and um, it's on enough that this can slightly move freely and not be bound up. So that's important. So now there's a little bracket here that goes on with its tiny little nut. I'll show you something here that I've been working on for a while. Um, this little part, this little bracket that comes over this sliding plate to keep it from falling off, it's too tight. And when I, I got the machine, you could not slide this at all. So, this bar is very slightly bowed outward, very slightly. And when you screw this in, it's going to bind up against it. And you could not slide this plate back and forth at all. So, what I did is I took, I have some very heavy craft kind of paper, and I basically folded it up on itself a whole lot trimmed it precisely so that it's underneath this part of the bracket and not here and punched a hole in it and that gives me just enough room so that now I can slide my lever back and forth while still cinching in this nut and I think that that's going to work so just letting you know I don't know if that's just this machine or this model in general but that's what I had to do but now you can see that it slides back and forth this little indicator plate is going to get screwed on right here I'm polishing up the heads of the little screws so it'll match up real pretty and this machine was miss missing the knob when I found it. So I noticed that the threads look a lot like cabinet threads. So I have a pretty little knob for a cabinet and look at that. It, it fits on those threads. So I'm just going to use that as my little knob to go back and forth. Don't cinch it down all the way. Well I guess you could because it's not going to screw all the way down. So, But yeah I think that that's going to work pretty well. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel back on. Now for the clutch on this, it's got this little spring-loaded button right here. And one sec. So I need to make sure that I place this little circle. There's a circle here and I coat, put a light coat of sewing machine oil on here and on here just to keep everything nice and clean and smoothly running. So let me get this. Hopefully, get it on there. Okay. And there's that bearing that gave me so much grief to take it off. I'm just going to pop that back on and look through and find the screw that I need to um, lock it in place. But here's the bearing that just pops onto the end. I will put oil on there. And then there's a screw that goes right through here and locks it onto that bearing. Now there is a slight flat part of a bearing right there, just slightly flattened, and that is the place where this screw hole lines up with. Okay, so I just put this spring back on. Um, there's a little round part here in the cast work that you put a screw with a washer under it, and then at the end of this bar down here where you cannot see, there's a tiny hole in the end of the screw of this spring, it's a wire, it just sets in there. So now, that is nicely in place. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and get this main piece on here in, and remember, it took a lot to get stuff out, so I wanna make sure it does not freeze up on me again. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of my really nice oil. 
Again, that's what I'm using, you know, not an endorsement, it's just what I have. On the shaft, this bottom edge here, I'm going to put some inside, the little part that sets on it. Okay. And, whoops, that's going to go this way. And just turn it for a little bit just to make it get smoothed out. Okay. Now that I have that done, this is the part that's going to slide on here. And you know what? I'm going to put some inside here too. I have cleaned these pieces. Get all that in there. Set this on. Set this inside of it. There's a little screw here on the side that I will need to you know, tighten up, remove and tighten up. And then once I have that done, there's a little top screw that's going to sit on here. And I'm just going to loosely put that on so nothing falls out while I get this one tightened up. Okay, so now this moves very, very freely. Very happy with that. I can tell over here, this is the part that holds the shuttle in, and it looks like it is positioned very uniform from the edge. I do have this little screw that I can adjust the length here if I need to when I'm getting everything timed up, but that looks really good to me. Okay, so now that I have that, I need to get this little linking bar back on here. Um, it has screws and it has pins, my nemesis pins. I'm just going to put a little super oil on here, a little inside each of these little holes. I'm just going to slide it on here for a moment to make sure everything works. I have to do them both at exactly the same time and not catch a rubber glove finger underneath. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's going to fit nicely. And um, so I have a pin here and little screws there. I'm going to go ahead and put my little screws on first. Not super tight, but tight enough that it's going to hold this together. Okay, so now that those are in, on each one of these posts, there is a little top that I need to put my washer on, and then I have a little pin that I need to tap into a hole going through on both of these. Okay, that was easy. Tapping them back in is a lot easier than taking them out the first time. So I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so I can turn my wheel. Uh, let's see if I go this way. I think that's towards the front. And it looks like everything is moving really smoothly. Look at that. How great is that? Okay. Now before I leave the bottom here, at this end there's a little bracket that sets over here and a screw that's going to hold this side in. So I need to get that screwed in carefully right there. Well, I'm so happy about t pins. I'm going to be putting this big old pin back here in the wheel. And there's another little, little bitty screw here. Ah, don't lose it. Just dropped it. I, I see it. Um, but I need to screw that in right here also back with my coffee and I want to show you a couple of things. Um, when I make my machines and I paint them, I do my best. I do my very best. Um, while I'm working with these things and flipping them all over and putting them back together, I cannot help but get some little chips. You know, it's just the way it is. I do my best to pad and protect, but things happen. And like here's some tiny little guys that I actually um, put some clear coat over so they wouldn't get any worse. But here's my thought on all of it. This is, and in general, my machines are either nearly 100 years or over 100 years old, including, you know, this one is way over 100 years old, I think. Um, she deserves to be able to show that she is beautiful but has just a touch of wear, and that's fine. And on the plate, the front plate, for some reason, the paint did not want to adhere to this part of this little wire right there. It just didn't. But you know what? That's like a natural wear place, and I think that I think it gives it a nice 
old but not worn out patina, if you know what I mean. So I could try to touch her up and make it perfect, but honestly, I think that it fits their nature a little better to have those little slight imperfections. I love that. It makes them more real to me. So I just wanted to point that out as I continue to put her together. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the plates on now so I can get these feed dogs um, situated. I want to make sure that they're set at the right height and at the right placement. At this point, I want to introduce you to her box. Yes, we are slowly advancing woodworking skills. Well, my husband is, honestly. The woodworking part of this is his baby. So, again, very beginning, so please don't criticize. But this one, it's all oak. Um, we're not worrying about hinges or anything on the back because typically this machine, you shouldn't have to lean it back to be able to change the bobbins and everything. So, here it is. It's got little areas cut out to fit her random random curves. So I'm just going to lift her up and set her in since I have just about everything on the bottom finished at this point. And that's going to allow me to go ahead and turn her wheel and work on be able to basically work on her because she didn't have any support so she was never able to stand still. But look, you can see how my little knob can go back and forth. It's still a little bit sticky. I think that's just the nature of it, you know? It seems like if you lift up as you move it, it goes a little easier, but then, you know, sometimes not. But anyway, maybe I just need to keep moving it back and forth to get it worked into place. But she is moving, so that's a good thing. Um, so anyhow, let me finish cleaning out. What I have to do is with my a little razor blade, I come in here and just clean out the little crevices on the sides here where I need to be able to slide my plates in and out. And I did adjust my feed dogs. They were a little too low, then they were too high. Now, you know, Goldilocks has struck and they are just right. So um, the plates are gonna be a little bit tight. What I would, I, you don't want them too loose because you don't want them to fly off. Um, but now, maybe you can see, let me see if I can put another light here, all the little dates on her plate. And the latest one is 1887. So 1887 on here. And like I said before, based on her serial number, which is on this plate, and I'm just pushing it out with a wooden handle here. Here is her other plate with the serial number and everything. What this is here is a direction on what size of thread, they call it cotton, but what size of needle you need to use with what size of thread, which is kind of cool because they don't even sell thread according to these dimensions anymore. So anyhow, I'm going to pop it all back in here and the plates, they do go in and they do go out. They're a little bit snug, but you don't want them to fly out anyway. So that will work for me. Okay, I need to put the bobbin winder mechanism on and I can tell that when I painted it, um, I added a little bit of thickness here and here, so I'm just going to have to kind of smash it on so that it will fit something. Some paint will come off, but that's just the way it's going to go. Um, so anyhow, let me work this back and forth until it's in place, and then I can put that little bolt straight through. Okay, so it is on, and I can move it forwards and backwards, which is important because that's how you engage with the treadle belt that'll be right here, but it, you can see, I don't know if you can, but if I turn the crank, this cam does turn very slowly. So that's what it's supposed to do. And that should also make this go back and forth, but you know, and I can tell it is, it is moving it back and forth. I hear a little squeak. I need a dot of oil somewhere, I think, right in here. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tension up by, on top. To put the tension mechanism back up on here on top, the first thing I need to do is get this little bracket on here, and there is a pin. Ah, come back here, little bracket. 
there's a pin that I need to punch through there to hold it in place. So, okay, so I got the the little mechanism here put back on, and then I could just set the blade on top, you know, rounded side at the back, and put the little thumb screw on. I don't have it on super tight, there's no reason to put it under that much stress right now. But it's back together enough that way. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is start getting my face plate back together, because a lot of the mechanism is in the plate. And so before I do a lot of intricate stuff, this is the presser bar, or actually this is the, um, yeah, this is the presser foot goes on here. And I just wanted to make sure that I could get it moving smoothly in these holes because I did paint it. So I just have it in here. I'm working it back and forth with some machine oil. And now it's very, very slidey. So that's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back out so I can get some parts put in. Um, we have this little piece that I'm gonna wiggle into place here. Okay, so I actually, turn my light here, took the little screw that goes in here out so it would fit through that opening better. And now I have the top of my presser foot in and I'm just sliding my spring onto it. And I have not put that screw back or this because I need to be able to move everything freely up in here. So it's looking a little more like this right now. There's a screw hole on my presser bar that need that lines up with this hole here. So once I get that all lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in here and this one over here. Okay, so this screw is in, this screw is in. I actually backed this one out just a bit because this screw is what spreads those apart. And when I had it in all the way, it was spreading it so much that it was getting really stiff in there. And I cannot remember how far down this screw was in. I actually have a, a new home manual in the house. I should bring it out. Um, which will probably give me some guidance on how far to screw this in. But for right now, you can see it's putting enough pressure onto the spring in here that when I push the presser foot up, it comes right back down. Okay, but it is pretty stiff. But it's doing its thing here, maybe up here you can see. Okay, so I might um, undo it a little bit to let some of that pressure off and then when I'm doing fine tuning, I can adjust it. Put the presser foot back on. There's a little screw in the back. That's, I should watch my own video to see, um, but to me it looks like it should go front to back like that. And then there's a little screw that goes in the side here to lock that in place. And I'm just kind of holding the plate up here right now to try to get this bar turned in the right position so that I can screw the little presser foot on so it's correct. Okay, so taking this off again now, let me go on to the next part. My funky little spring mechanism here, this part is not attached to anything at this point, um, but I need to screw this in up on top. Looks pretty good. So this part can move nice and freely there, if you can see. Okay, I should turn the light on. There you go. So now you can see how this piece is moving. And I went inside and I grabbed my uh, user's manual I have, but it's for a different model. So I had printed off a user manual, but it was for a different model than I have. Kind of similar, but different, you know but I can see how far in general they want this little screw, which looks like about a half inch or so. So I think that's what I'm just gonna start with mine set at. And uh, go on to the next piece. Okay, so let me see if I can aim this so you can see. There's a little post right there. I have my cleaned up bearing. I'm gonna put a drop of oil on the post here and hopefully my bearing will pop on and move very freely, which it does. Got a little greasy fingerprint on it, but you know, it does. And uh, now, oh, where is it?
is the piece I want. This is the piece I want. Okay, so this part here is what's going to, that bearing's going to travel on. But I don't actually attach it to the bearing. Get down, kitty. I put this in here. Okay, so um, let me take this part off down here. This is what holds the needle on. I just put it there so I wouldn't lose it. Set that aside. And this little arm here that has an eyelid on it, the little piece that I just showed you has a little um, nub that sticks out that fits into that eyelet. So now when this goes up and down, it moves that whole piece, okay? And um, I'm thinking that's about it for this inside part. I'm thinking I should be able to just put it on, but I'm going to look at all my parts and make sure I'm not missing anything first. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I just, I'm just holding it in place here, I'm going to go ahead and get all of my little screws to reconnect it all the way around here um, because I can't put the little presser foot lifter on until after this is closed and I have um, a couple other screws that I need to get set in here. So I have four, if you remember, I have a baggie full of screws here. Um, the longer ones go in these four holes in the back. I'm going to go ahead and put those in first. Got my four long screws put on. I'm turning it, but this little piece here is not moving. And I think when I was setting it on, that little eyelet and the little cog thing came apart. So I am going to unscrew it and reset it and try it one more time. Okay, so now when I turn the wheel, if you can see, this little wire goes back and forth. That's what I wanted. That was a little bit of a tricky thing. One thing that has me concerned is I can see, well, when I can lift my presser foot, I can't right now because that mechanism's over here. Um, but there's a whole bunch of stab wounds around the hole that the needle goes through on the plate and also around the presser foot, which has me concerned. I don't think that this is bent, um, but at some point it was out of alignment enough that it just kind of went on a free-for-all stabbing. And so we'll just see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and put these two side screws in. They are much shorter, um, top and bottom right here. I've put this little screw with the uh, presser foot lifter on and it goes like this so that when it's down, it's not totally down. Um, well, when, before this is on, this piece can actually go farther down. But this is the down position and that's the up position. Okay? So I am going to need to adjust the presser foot though because the down position doesn't even touch the feed dogs at the highest point down here so I will need to adjust that um, and unfortunately I can't adjust that until I take this off again okay actually before I take it off I'm just thinking there wasn't a way to adjust the presser foot height because there was a set hole that the other part of this little block screwed into, you know? There wasn't a clamp that had any give. It was just one set hole. I think that on this machine, all you can do is adjust the feet dog height. And remember I said, oh, it's too high before? I think I need to adjust the feed dogs back to that too high position because now that the presser foot is higher, it would then match. I think that's what I need to do. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news, the needle fits. I just used her old needle. I believe this is a, in, what is it, one by 20? Slightly longer needle. I have no idea if it sews yet, but it is going up and down. It is going into the hole. That's the good news. Well, if you are a new home aficionado, you already know the great blunder that I did. If not, let me tell you, I apparently have no problem with my presser foot height 
or my feed dog height. What I had a problem with is I did not know how to use the lifter. So here's the thing. Um, I still have a few more screws to put back in here, but there's two ways to do this. You can lift it this way, you can lift it this way, or that. Okay, and this way it's going to lock it higher. This way it's just temporary and then it goes back down. Okay, but at complete rest is straight down. The reason that I thought it was that way at complete rest, because that's how it was when I got it, and it was so gummed up and everything that it wouldn't go this way. But obviously, that's the way it goes. So let me put all these screws back in. I got to put this screw back in, a couple other things, and I will be right back. Okay, so <clears throat> I need to put the needle back in, but up here at the top, there is a little thread guide that I need to put on with its adjoining little screw. You can see it's going to go right up here, right behind the needle bar. So I just stuck a paper towel in there and you can see, I'm trying to do this one-handed on a turntable, so it's kind of wobbly, but the paper towel, it is advancing, so the presser feet are doing what it's supposed to do. Um, a problem I just noticed is my beautiful little knob, she works lovely, but she is so high that I can't move her over here underneath the bobbin winder unfortunately. And this is the wider stitch length. This is like zero over here and this is the wider one. So that is a stitch length that will be used. So I'm going to need to search around and try to find a prettier little knob. But just to let you know, a, a regular threaded um, cabinet knob does fit on there. So I'll see what I can find in my stash for that. And I think I just need to get the shuttle put in and put my back plate on. I can't forget about her. Okay, so I got her all together and she turns. So I'm going to take her up and put her on my universal treadle cabinet and see if I can get her to work. And bonus, no extra screws are found. So um, that's always good. That's always a headache having to go back and figure out where you are. I have the shuttle in here. It does have... A little polished up. You wouldn't believe how many layers of thread were on here. It was crazy. I don't even know. Um, but I have one bobbin for her, so I'm going to go ahead and thread the bobbin when I get over to the house. I found an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel. And knew I'd take her home I brought her to my farm In an Amish neighborhood Where simple living's valued She'd be loved and understood I put her on a treadle stand And coaxed her wheel to turn I felt her joy and easing With my study and concern I cleaned her and I oiled her Showed her off to all my friends Repaired her hurts and years of use And let her sew again 